Hey guys, got a deck profile video for you today. Uh, one Monster Championship, as you probably know by the thumbnail and the title of the video. Um, haven't been uploading recently because I've been really try harding trying to get that invite. I uh, wasn't able to uh, get into any of the regionals in August because they, you know, got filled up literally immediately while I was at work. Didn't get the chance to even sign up for any of them. Uh, that being said, I went to a sword championship in my uh, hometown. Uh, thankfully, we have a really strong locals there. Um, I uh, didn't win that one. I actually went X1. That was earlier in September. I think it was about, I think it was September 23rd, actually, just a couple weeks ago. And I went to a sword championship yesterday in Knoxville, Tennessee. It was a 32-person uh, sword championship that was also a win -a box because they have so many players that play there. They had to increase the cap. And only the top 16 players got the participant pack, you know. Some people might disagree with how that was ran. Whatever. You know, it's just so more people can play. Um... Yeah, I ended up picking first place at that. It was five rounds. Uh, it was a super long tournament. It was started at like 12, 12.30. We went to five or six. It was a long day, super mentally exhausting. I'm glad to say that I did win. Um, my biggest reason for actually making this video today is not because of winning the store championship. It's because of what I won it with. Uh, yeah, Lord Knight seems, you know, super cookie cutter. It's like, oh, he won it with Lord Knight. Congrats. Best deck in the format, whatever. Uh, I'm actually not playing any Pulse Mons at all. Not a single one. Uh, I think Koti one's better. I know that's a hot take, but uh, I'll explain as I go. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and start. Like always, you can just skip to the end, see my list. Uh, but if you want to stick around, see and hear what changes I would make, you know, just stick around. Uh, first off, the eggs. It's very... It's, it's Lord Knight eggs. It's one Coralmon, four Pigmon. It's, that's what Lord Knight plays. Um, shouldn't change it. I know some people play the Upamon to draw. I tried that. It, the Upamon comes up as bad as much as Pikmon comes up, right? It's whatever you prefer. I am playing a heavy DP reduction build, so Pikmon just ended up coming in clutch for me a few times. Um, going into the rookies, we got four of the memory gain Patamon, four of the Starmon, three Kotimon, uh, one Bushy Agumon, one Recovery Pata, and one Lusamon. Um, I'm just going to talk about the rookies for just a second. Um, a lot of people play the four star mon. It's just really good. It's a small little knot mon you can play off of Lord Knot's effect to help increase her DP and lower whatever she's hitting's DP. You know, just fix math. It's really strong, really good. Star mon is just a good card. You should play it. Uh, a lot of people don't play four of the memory game Patamon. I love it. I think there's very specific turns where if they put you at two uh, with the way War Growl and Slash work, where you can actually do a lot with this Patamon, uh, especially if like if you have War Growl and Secure or uh, Raising. And they put you to two on the turn you're supposed to go to your mega. Um, if they pushed out, you can push up. You know, War Growl, Digiverse 2, 4K something. If it doesn't die, Slash, it will die. You'll be at zero. And then you can Valder, kill their whole board. And that's on, like, your fourth turn. And they have nothing, and you have a Valder. It's so strong. It's, like, minus 26K DP. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, I'm playing the one Bushy, one Loose, one Pata. I just think these are, like, my little tech rookies. Um, I don't like Bushy Agumon in this variant. I think you should only play Bushy if you're playing Angel Woman in your level 5s. I am not. I will explain that when we get there. Uh, but yeah, Bushy is not that great. I think you would rather be a 4th Koti. Um, you could make him a 1-up Pulse Mon, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and preface this and say I'm not playing Pulse Mons in here because I don't own the Pulse Mons, because I do. I tested Pulse Mon first in the first Sword Championship, and then after testing Koti Mon, I really, really liked him. He done a ton of work for me Saturday and a lot of people really downplay the card because like oh he whiffed oh that's terrible you get no gain off of Cody Mon and Pulse Mon always draws you a card here's the scenario in which I think Cody Mon's better than Pulse Mon and I think this is the main scenario that you should worry about and why you should play it um a lot of times yesterday you know you don't have a level six in your hand you don't have a level five you go your whatever level three to Ruri you know put them at one you know, they evolve in, you know, their rookie, their one cost level four, and then they'll go into an ultimate or play a rookie, you're at two or three regardless. If you don't have that level five on that turn, but you have Cody, or if you don't have a six or whatever it may be, you know, you evolve down here into five. If you're at three, go to zero, whatever, play Cody. You know, you search five cards. Oh, well, you missed Lord Knot, or, or well, you missed the Knotmon that you needed, or whatever it may be. Most of the time, the way that I view it is if you didn't see Lord Knight in those five cards and this was a Pulse Mon instead, you have five draws ahead of you where you were not going to see Lord Knight. You were just weren't. And in that game, you probably would have been behind quite a bit. Yeah, you can draw through five cards fairly quickly, but I just think the Cody Mon bumps you up a couple turns as far as getting to your Lord Knight. I mean, it's the deck's called Lord Knight for a reason. That's the card you want to find, so why would you not play your search for it? 
right? And I understand the significance of Pulse Bomb being able to play it at three, draw a card, gain a memory, um, some of the consistency things that he adds to the deck and things like that. I am fully aware. Um, like I said, I went X1 in my first store championship playing the Pulse build and playing this build yesterday at a larger store championship with many more players and a much wider variety of players and better players. Cody, Cody got me there. He was very strong. There were multiple times during the day where I got a Nightmon and a Lord Nightmon off of him. He's strong. I loved him. I was able to consistently see my Lord Knights tons and tons and tons. There was one game against the green where I had three Lord Knights established and the game was just over. Because I, I just found them. Cody helps you find them. A lot of th times what I would run into is when I was playing the Pulse Mon is I couldn't find my sixes. And you have no way of getting to them quickly, which is Pulse Mon, you're destroying cards. And, you know, that's easily arguable, many different ways and things like that. This is just what I found the most success with, what I found the most luck with. Um, the two rookies here, uh, the Lusamon and the Patamon, I love this combination because there's many times where they both are very strong. It's hard to say one's better than the other. I think a 1-1 one, one of both is perfect. I will not be changing that at all. The only change I think I'd make to my rookies, I think I would cut Bushy just because I'm not playing the Angel Woman, like I said. And I think when you do play Bushy off of Lord Knight, it never really matters. If you're having to play Bushy for game, I think you're playing Lord Knight incorrectly. Um, but that's that's just me. Um, going into the fours, the fours are super cookie cutter. Four Pedo. Uh, three Teruri. The only reason the fourth one's not in there is because of... I had to cut, I cut one for the Gladi, and I wanted to make sure I played three Unimons, because 6k blockers are just oh so important in this format. There was a ton of red there yesterday. Uh, thankfully, I didn't run into any of the red players. There was a lot of Shoutmon. Um, I don't know how many times I counted yesterday where I overheard somebody saying, uh, Zeg Greymon only works when you're using Blitz, not when you have Blitz. For some reason, red players don't know that. I don't know why they don't know that or don't understand that interaction. But it was it was funny. Um, level 4s are super standard. I think you need to play multiple copies of Unimon. Three at the very least. He's just too impactful, too many matchups. Uh, 5k is just too easy to get rid of. And your 5k blockers almost never even block anything worthwhile anyways. They just chump block Megas usually, if anything. But Unimon really does stop a lot. Um, I just play the one Gladi as an extra search off of Koti just to be able to, you know, hit sometimes off of him. Um, Gladi's good as well. There was two different instances where he did pull me a Lord Knight out of security. Uh, there was one instance where he pulled a Lord Knight out of security, and I had three Lord Knights in security. And that helped a lot, because that would have been a very bad game. Um, going into the fives, these are super straightforward as well. You know, it's Lord Knight. Not much really changes with the deck. Um, I'm playing four War Growl, four Nightmon, and one Rise Gray. I found myself switching that last slot for the fives a lot. Usually it was either the Angel Woman or the Siren Mon. And I liked Siren Mon more than Angel Woman because I just liked the two cost when I got there. Um, I didn't like Angel Woman a lot because I found myself playing too many bodies onto the board. And I wouldn't have a rookie to evolve back here with to be able to draw another card. And that was a problem. And a lot of times with Lord Not, with this deck in particular, you're not worried about trying to get down to... Oh, excuse me. You're not worried about trying to get down to three security so much is because, you know, you don't have any cards that really rely on being at three security. So it's just really strong. Um, I really, really like this variation. I think it's much stronger into a lot of the top tier decks. Um, just a heavy DP reduction. Rise Gray, the reason he is there over the Siren Mon and the Angel Mon is just to play the TK for free on that impactful turn. Um, I was starting to notice that once you, if you don't hit the War Growl, evolving into Nightmon just sucks, and evolving into Angel Woman and Siren Mon early just sucks. He does not suck to evolve into early because you're playing a good amount of TKs to see, and he played TK for me all day long. He was so strong. You just have to keep in mind you can evolve over him in raising on a level four, but a level six yellow cannot evolve over him in raising because he's not treated as yellow in the breeding. That's just something you kind of got to watch out for. But you'll never want to evolve over him. You want to use his Digiburst to get to TK. And that's just usually really, really strong. Really liked it. Definitely keeping him in here. Loved him. He really pulled his weight. Really pulled his weight. Um, going into the sixes, four Lord Knights. That's super standard. Not going to explain that at all. Um, three Slashes. I think the one War Gray is bad. I think if you're going to play the four War Growl, and you're going to play the Star Mons, and the Night Mons, and all the DP reduction, just play Slash. It's better. Um, it's definitely better when they push up their Mega too early or before you. Because uh, good players against Lord Knight know you want to play Chicken. You want Lord Knight to push up their Mega first and then try to kill Lord Knight the very following turn. Um, but a lot of times, 
players will try to push up, get value off of their mega if they can. You just bring up, you know, remove two sources, war growl. Most of the time you leave this Patamon under the war growl. Minus 4k to something, and then slash. And then if you're at two memory or more, you turn one in, which is so strong. And then you can just vault or put them to six. But it doesn't matter they're at six, because you kill their whole board. Because it's just a disgusting interaction. It's so strong. A lot of people think the one war gray acts as a fifth lord knight. I would disagree. War gray is significantly worse, in my opinion. Um, he's okay. I think if you do play him, you need to play heavy Angelwoman and more bushies. And in that variation, I would say um, Pulse probably is better. But I don't think playing one War Gray and two Slash is ever the move. I think you should play two or three War Gray alongside Slash if you're going to play that. And then play more of like a like a board flood variation of the deck. Mixing it just didn't feel good. Um, another thing in the mirror, Slash is so strong in the mirror. So, so strong. Like, there, there's many instances with against Lord Knight, they'll push up, they'll attack. Uh, and they'll have just the Lord Knight and the one rookie, or whatever it may be. Uh, you go up, War Growl, Digiverse 2, kill the rookie. Uh, then go into Slash. If your turn doesn't end, you know, you bring down Lord Knight and then swing into her and kill her. And then you can Vault her, kill whatever else you want. It's just so strong. And in the mirror, I think Slash is just so important. And I played a lot of cards specifically before the mirror. So that's kind of like a tech that I went through. Uh, Rise Gray also helps too because you don't have to take a turn off to play TK if you see him, which is really strong. Um, speaking of TK, I am playing 3 TK. I think 3 is a good number. 4 is a little too much. 2 is a little too con inconsistent. 3 is a really good number for me. I like playing 3 ofs in a lot of Digimon decks. I think 3 is super good, super consistent. Uh, playing 2 Blinding Rays. Um, for a while, I was a little bit like, mm, I don't think you really need Blinding Ray in Lord Knight. A lot of times you see it and you're like, the only time it's really ever good is when they put you at 1 or 2 on the turn you want to go into Lord Knight, and you Blinding Ray, and you go into Lord Knight, right? That's when it's strong, that's when it's good. And I think because of that, that's where it kind of merits the one or two of slot. Um, also, being able to play it with no security is really strong. FYI, every one of you that are judges and say you can't play bonding rate at zero, you can. You're wrong. You can play bonding rate at zero. I don't know why we have such an issue with this, but you can. You absolutely can. Um, yeah, it's super good, super strong. Uh, next, I'm playing one spiral. Spiral's cool, especially if you want to remove something and... Uh, it's a good end your turn card if you don't have Valder. I was playing it at two, but I actually cut the second one in favor of the third Valder. Um, I think three Valder is actually what really wins you the mirror match, especially. Uh, if you Valder your opponent first and they can't kill your board back on the next turn, you're winning and you probably will win the game. Um, that being said, Valder is just huge. A lot of players will just, after Valder pops, they're like, oh, well, you don't have to kill it. He does nothing after he uses his Windage Evolving effect. Well, yeah, he's swinging at you for 14 each turn, and if he dies to security, I get three free memory to just turbo extend that turn, which is so strong. Um, but this is the list. Uh, like I said, no pulse mons. I think a lot of people will find uh, really good value in this list uh, if you don't want to spend the money for pulse mons. Thankfully, he's starting to go down. I think he's around the $25 range now, which is good. You know, he was upwards of 40 for a long time. I'm, glad, I'm really, really glad I found this list, though. I, I like it a lot. It's really cohesive, really coherent. I really urge you to try this list. Even if you have Pulsemon, try it. I genuinely would not cut Kotimon in this specific build for Pulse. I wouldn't. I would not. Kotimon was so kind to me all day yesterday. Really, really pulled his weight. Really did. Um, but yeah, that's that's the list. Uh, as far as changes, I probably would change the Bushy. He doesn't really do well with what this deck wants to do. Um, besides that, everything seems solid. Uh, my matchups yesterday were uh, round one mirror match. It was 2-1. Um, he was playing Super Cookie Cutter, Lord Knight. You know, Pulses, the one War Grey, two Slash, four Lord Knight. Uh, four Knightmon, four War Growl, one or two Angelwomon. I don't think he played Patamon, but he did play a Loose. Um, and I don't think he played Spiral either. Um, yeah, I like this list a lot. Uh, game two was against Green, and they were playing a variation of Green that was specifically tech to beat Lord Knight. He was a player that uh, goes to the locals where I had to drive to for the Switch Championship, uh, and there was a lot of Lord Knight players there. You know, I guess he just wanted to find a version of Green that could beat Lord Knight consistently. He definitely found it. He was playing a card called Weisland, which is Reflezimon's uh, option card, which stuns two things for the end of the turn. It's got a super strong security effect, too, and, like, you gain two memory. Super good. Super strong. 
Um, I beat him round one because he kind of just bricked. Because I, I guess he bricked. I don't know, but it was weird. Round one actually went the distance, and I ended up winning. Uh, round two, he managed to stun two different Lord Night mods while they were on the board at the same time for three turns, and just got ahead of me because I never could attack with Lord Night, which is where the merit of Reflezimon is. But with Reflezimon and that Weisling card, he definitely kept me held down for a little while. He managed to steal game two. Um, game three, I used a little strategy that I've kind of been, you know, it's kind of cheesy, but if, you know, if they're not going to give us a mulligan, and I know my opponent's playing a lot of tech cards for certain matchups, I'm going to make them go first, hope they brick, and watch them hard play something to end their turn. And I abused that a lot yesterday. I think that's something a lot of good players, you'll find them doing, is that if you know your opponent's playing really weird techs or a really weird variation of a deck, just make them go first, watch them brick, and then you get ahead. Uh, in game three, he had to play a weed mod because he did not open a rookie and he didn't want to just pass because, you know, you know you're playing against Lord Knight. You need to get some kind of board advantage to get it going. Uh, he hard played the weed mod, put me to four. Uh, I went at Pata, Taruri, um, War Growl, hard played Cody mod, put him at three. The Cody mod that I played that turn got me the Lord Knight, but she was the very next card I was going to draw. So whatever. Uh, he got me the Lord Knight, you know, put the next four on the bottom. Um, and then when he was at three from Weedmon, he went into Blossom and then Reflezi, I think, put me back to three. And then I just pushed up the card I drew after Lord Knight after searching the five was Slash. Uh, I wore Growl, slashed it, and the game was just over there. It was just over. He didn't find a rookie for, I think, another turn or two after that because he couldn't draw for Evolving. And I just, game three, he just got beaten because of his, his deck, you know. You know, if they're going to play a lot of techs for certain matchups and a lot of weird brick cards... Make them go first. Hope they, hope they don't help their brick. You know, it's it's a very viable strategy. Um, game three was the best player I played all day, which was Imperial Jamon. Uh, he was playing, you know, super, you know, good Imperial Jamon. Had the Hammer Sparks, all the cards you would expect. He had a really weird one of Puppet Mon tech. Uh, game one was super close. Uh, I was at zero security when I beat him. Game two, Puppet Mon beat me. Just straight up beat me. Puppet Mon beat me. <laughs> um, and then in game three, I was aware of the Puppet Mon, and I knew he was playing one Nidhogg because I'd hit it in security. Um, I just played more, um, you know, laid back. Just took my time deleting everything before I started attacking. Um, and then once I finally got Lord Knight, I was only attacking with the Lord Knight, not really pushing any advantage. Just kept deleting everything with all the DP reduction that I play. And eventually got through game three. That was the best player I played all day, though. He knew how to play the matchup. He was good. He knew what was going on. Um, game four was actually my easiest matchup all day. It was against Black Toolbox. He, um, in game one, I actually 2 0 him. Game one, he just really couldn't keep up. Uh, he just kept getting kind of behind. I guess that's kind of what happens when you play a Toolbox style deck. He had some weird option cards in there. Granted, he was 3 0, so they were working. I think he was playing a card called Blazing Storm of Metal to try and, I guess if you hit it in security, it basically ends your turn, right? Like, you can't attack anymore, which is good. It bought him a turn a couple times. Uh, but game one wasn't too sweaty. I managed to beat him pretty easily. Or game one. And then in game two, he just bricked out of his mind. He he was playing, you know, a toolbox deck with a bunch of brick cards. Like I said again, and he just bricked. And, yeah, I would argue that game does need a mulligan. You know, that's an argument everyone's had in the card game. We've had our arguments about it but um i mean if you're gonna play a deck like that and you're only gonna play like 11 or 12 rookies you know if you don't open a rookie that's on you my guy that's all, that's, that's on you <laughs> um that being said though that was a really easy game four i was starting to get really shaky during that too because i just too old him i was like okay you know i'm here we're going into game five or round five i'm four oh there's only one other four other other four oh and it was security control um but yeah Security control is a free win, in my opinion. I don't think I, I don't think I could ever lose to security control. I think it's a super easy matchup for most decks as long as you know how to play it. As long as the security control player doesn't just have the absolute nuts in their security, then I just don't think that they can beat you. Because um, most of the time what security control does is it relies on you playing into their strategy. And if you just don't play into their strategy, you know, just leave them at four security, hard prey level fives. Eventually, they'll run out of removal. They don't have any way to draw extra cards anyways. And you just kill them once you have seven attacks when they're at four security. Make sure you attack with everything first. They can't die to ultimate flare. Simple. Simple. I see so many players misplay into security control. I just don't understand it, man. I just, I think it's such an easy matchup. Yeah, my fifth round was super easy. Super, super easy. Was so glad for it to be that easy. Um, 
he uh, he had in the fifth round he had tried to make an agreement with me um, to just you know scoop or throw the game for money things like that and I was just like no nah. you know they made us play it out regardless and it wasn't even close I just beat him and it, and it, it just I just don't think security control can beat Lord and I I think it's a very awful matchup um, but yeah it was a good day uh, Kotimon really pulled his weight he was MVP for sure Kotimon is good. I swear, if you if you swear by Pulsemon and haven't tried Kotimon, try it. I know he whiffs. Just try it. Try this. Try this list. I think this is solid. I think it's really good. A lot of you guys want to play yellow, but you were kind of scared of the price point because of the Pulsemons. Play this list. It's good. I won a store championship with it. A 32 person. I won. It was a winner box as well. This list done me a lot of good. It really did. And when, like, at, at your peak, once you get to become a really good player and you know your matchups in and out and you know exactly how to play them, honestly, at like a lot of people want to scream Lord Knight's Tier 0 and, you know, it's the best deck in the format. It is the best deck in the format. Tears, it's not Tier 0. Definitely not Tier 0. There's so many Lord Knight players who don't know their matchups and they just lose to themselves, but they want to blame, luck, whatever it may be. Um, that being said, though, I've really sweated a lot for this. Uh, I haven't been making too many videos the last few weeks, like I said. I do apologize. I've really been trying for this invite for Nationals. I'm glad I got it. I'm glad we're there. I'm ready to play some more fun stuff. I'm going to go back to trying to make a video a week again. Just get some deck profiles of some more fun decks, you know, to play for the rest of BT5 format. Because, unfortunately, we're stuck in it for another month, which sucks. But we'll have some fun. We'll see if we can make some meme stuff. And I really thank you guys for watching. Have a great evening, morning, afternoon, night, whatever it is. Peace.